everyone. So welcome once again to the Food for Life session. This is a three session seminar, which is um, in partnership to where we are two partners, World Vegan Vision uh, and a plant powered Metro New York. And our missions align. So, you know, we uh, as at World Vegan Vision, you know, it's a nonprofit organization and we uh, raise awareness about um, health benefits, environmental benefits, and compassion with your diet. So we um, you know, put veganism at the forefront. And so that's plant power in Metro New York, but their um, focus is on whole food plant-based diet. Right, Chef? Okay. So together, we have aligned our missions, and together um, we are here today for learning about food for life, um, and today's series is the first one. We are talk, going to talk about heart health. And to talk about heart health, we have Dr. Shah, who is the medical expert, uh, medical director at World Vegan Vision. Um, and he uh, is an uh, internist. He recently retired. He is an internist for 35 years? 37. 37 <laughs> years. And a vegan of 20, 22 years. Uh, in his uh, career, he has helped many, many patients, um, you know, reverse, prevent, and manage heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and so many things, so many ailments. He taught people the power of diet, power of whole food plant-based diet. And today he's gonna share some of anecdotes from his experience. Um, apart from that, he's also he's also run six marathons, um, <laughs> wow, several yes. half marathons. He recently climbed Everest Base Camp. Everest Base Camp. <laughs> yes, and all this is possible on a vegan diet. And then we have Chef Anthony Spino here from uh, PPMI. He is going to show you how he's going to show you the action behind how we can create healthy, heart-friendly meals in not much time. So, you know, welcome chef. And we have Luis Morales, he's also from PPNY, and you know, they are our friends here who are gonna talk about how on diets, and Dr. Shah is gonna focus on why, right? Dr. Shah, please. Thank you, Kanadi. So before we start, I would like to uh, get an idea what I am facing. <laughs> How many people are already vegan? Two, three, four. Okay. How many are vegetarians? They don't eat meat, but they eat products. Okay. And how many eat everything? Okay. All right. Just a fair distribution, which is kind of atypical <laughs> in the in the mainstream. But uh, but I have uh, uh, been. Uh, fortunate enough to really go on this uh, journey myself and uh, it, it's been a beautiful journey and it took me a long time. I'm not somebody who will just accept it just on, on somebody's telling me and neither should you. You know, I believe in three steps. One is in Sanskrit they call shravan, means you gather all the information first. Then mana, you, you brood over it. Not just brood, you get any kind of research you want to collect in that field. And then achran, achran is you put it in the behavior, in your action. So, so those most of the people hear it, they get excited about it, and they say, "Well, I want to go vegan today." Ninety-nine percent of the people don't. They even they do it for a day or two, and then they fall back. So, I want you to go out and, and with the internet, there's so much document, so many documentaries, so much information. All that is available, absorb it, and then make a decision uh, whether to go for whole food plant-based diet or not, if it makes sense to you. So as I said, I have been in on vegan myself for so many years and uh, it took me a long time to go over all these things and, and finally one time I realized when I was uh, in South Africa uh, and we were on a safari, me, my son, my parents and my wife, right? So we saw a lion who was chasing a warthog and warthog was running so fast, so fast. And the lioness tried and tried and tried, she could not catch it. The warthog ran away, the lioness was coming back. This was in 2001. 
And then it was about five o'clock in the afternoon and the sun was shining at an angle. The body of the lion was glowing like gold and every single muscle you could count was like flickering, you know? And suddenly it just came in my mind that how come these animals are so handsome, so fit? And what are we doing here in this human society? Uh, we are not fit and we are like far from it. What is the main difference between a lion's food, lion's lifestyle and our lifestyle? Then I just went into a lot of, lot of thinking and brooding over it and I realized, came to one conclusion that in the jungle there is no choice. If a lion cannot hunt, he dies. Simple. He has to stay fit. The day he cannot hunt, he will die. So staying fit is very important for all of us. It's not like that we wake up in the morning, open up the fridge and sit down, right? If a lion wants to eat, he has to work hard. There is no shop right or supermarket he can stop by for pick up a piece of meat, nothing like that. There are no grandchildren who will come and say, okay, grandpa, if you cannot hunt, we'll feed you. Nothing like that. By creating this society that we have created, we have created a lot of choices. If I, I would tell my patients, he said, come on, I'll offer you a carrot and a carrot cake. What would you have? Carrot cake. <laughs> because carrot cake is available. In the jungle, there is no choice. So, are the choices good for you? Or choicelessness is a better way to live life? I remember J. Krishnamurti, Jitu Krishnamurti from southern India, he gave a beautiful quote that appealed to me. It said that the freedom to choose is a great freedom to have. Like we were all controlled, America, India were controlled by British. We wanted to be free because we wanted to have freedom to choose. And it's a great freedom to have, but freedom from your choices is the ultimate freedom. Because these choices are located in our mind. And these choices are influenced by the society. Societies, they feed you all this information, right, wrong, we don't know. And the corporate America, a lot of information will be coming to you. But we need to have wisdom to select what is right for me and what's not. So individual freedom can only happen when you can be free to choose and freedom from your own choices. Which choice is taking you in which direction? That's the most important thing. So I realized that if I, supposing I lived in a jungle, what would I eat? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, roots, and how much I'll be walking? Five miles, six miles, climb the trees, exercise so much. And then finally, if I get a, a raw apple, what I'm gonna do? It's not, I just eat it. So I left with that psychology built up in my mind that I'm gonna be exercising every day. And I'm gonna try to keep myself fit and I will eat whatever a jungle would have to offer. Not necessarily I have to live in a jungle, but I can still stay here and eat the raw food. So I started changing my diet slowly and it started making tremendous differences. I started eating pretty much raw food, all little by little. Again, none of this thing happened overnight, so don't think that it's gonna to happen to you overnight. So I started eating a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, nuts, seeds, and, and all that plant-based diet really reversing a lot of my own lipid profiles and things like that. I lost like 24 pounds almost, and I started feeling fit, I started running, and then I ran six marathons and all that. So I, it, I can just share my journey, but on top of that, I had a lot of, lot of patients who really benefited a lot. So people who are eating everything, I'll ask one question. If you try to catch something and it runs away, and I did ask this to my patient, and I frequently ask to a lot of my patients. If I, one lady came in, she came from upstate New York, she drove like three and a half hours to come see me. And she said, you know, my mom, you know, in the next town, she told me, you're a good doctor, so I'll come and see you. I have this bronchitis, take care of me, please. But please, my cholesterol is very high. So, how much? I said, she said, her bad cholesterol was 173, it should be 99. So, and she ate, she, her ex was Italian, she had just come back from Italy and they had eaten everything under the sky. Italians have known for their food. Right, so they did it and her bad cholesterol was 73. I said, what did your doctor say? And she says, well, she said, he says that I should go on a statins. 
They said, what do you think? And he says, no, 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 I don't want to go on any medication. I want to do it without medication. I said, did you get a second opinion? He says, yeah, I went to endocrinologist. He said the same thing. I said, so what do you think? I said, well, you came to a different doctor. So, so I asked him, her this question. So if you try to catch something, it runs away, what would you do? What would you do? Try to catch it. Try to catch it. That's 99% of the people would say that. She didn't say that. Her answer was, I'll let it go. That also is an option, not to run after. Animals have legs. Mm -hmm. They try to save their own life. Why are we running after them? We are forcing ourselves onto the environment just for our food, where the trees don't run away, plants don't run away. There is no need to really chase and choose. So that's something that stuck in my mind. And believe it or not, she decided she went vegan that night. She went on a whole food plant based was not popular term terminology at that time. So it was just for convenience sake, I'll say veganism. So she did it overnight. She stopped all animal products. Believe it or not, six weeks she texted me and she must know some of the Indian words. She says, Shukriya, Dhanyavad, Shukriya means thank you for your wisdom. My bad cholesterol dropped from 173 to 68. No medications. Why did this happen? Do you know what is cholesterol? Everybody knows it clogs your arteries, gives you heart attacks, strokes, and all those things. But what does it do for us? Why do we have cholesterol? What is its function? Turned out to be, I didn't know. And in the part of the medical curriculum, we don't have nutrition as a subject, believe it or not. None of the doctors are familiar with what we should eat and what we should not. Yet, people are coming to us all the time. So I made it a point that I'm going to find out what's going on with this. And we knew that cholesterol was bad, but I said, why is it so bad? So I googled it. So what is cholesterol? And suddenly the answer popped up. It says it is a sterol, it's a type of lipid molecule, a fat, which is essential component of a cell membrane of all animals. That means every single cell in an animal's body has a cell wall made out of cholesterol. Mm. So that was a bigger thing. It was really big because I said, that's awful. So I said, how about the plants? The plants, the cell walls were made out of cellulose. Cellulose is fiber, zero cholesterol. That means all animals are made out of cholesterol. We are made out of cholesterol. We draw our blood, we have cholesterol. You draw the blood of a snake or a frog or a sheep or a goat or cattle, whatever you, every animal is made out of cholesterol. So they have a circulating cholesterol making their cells all the time. We make our own cells all the time. And we also keep on shedding our cells all the time. So that's how we get older. We are born and as we keep on making new cells, we keep shedding old cells, our age increases. The day we cannot manufacture any new cells, we die. If I have to kill someone as a poison, I can give them a pill which will bring their cholesterol to zero, they will die instantaneously. Because making cells is very vital. So cholesterol is extremely important for us. It's just the overburden is not good. And that's why we should do what? Plant-based diet. Plant-based diet. <laughs> no animals. If you don't, if you want to lower down your cholesterol without medications, the first thing you should do is stop eating animals. And not just meat, dairy products, or any animal products will give you too. And it doesn't matter what part of chicken you eat, whether you eat the, the muscle or thigh or breast or wings or whatever, it doesn't matter. Every single thing has a cholesterol in it. So it's a no-brainer to switch from animal foods to the plant-based diet. And then Benjamin Franklin said, prevention, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Because cure we do, we know the cure, but we don't know the prevention. The whole structure of medicine is set on treatments. Like I could have easily put her on statin and let her go home, but it's just something in me bothered me. That lion kept on telling me that, that <laughs> there is something wrong with this structure. You know, in the, in the Eastern philosophy, we have Ayurveda. I'm, I don't have nothing to do with Ayurveda, but does anybody know the meaning of Ayurveda? Knowledge of life. Knowledge of life, science of life. Ayu means life, Veda means science. You know, they believe in the totality of your whole life. 
not just treatment, treatment of the diseases. Yes, they have that section also. But mostly yoga, asanas, meditations, all these things were included in all these things, right? So Ayurveda, I couldn't care less as far as the treatment because I was in the Western medicine. But Ayurveda, the name appealed to me, the meaning appealed to me, and a lot of people don't know, believe me, so you should feel good about it. That a lot of people don't know, they just need the, the, the Ayurveda, that's it. So, so that's how I, I like designed my, my strategy of thinking that I want to prevent diseases. But for that, I had to do it myself. So that's why I went on a, on an on a exercise binge and then and, and food and alterations and all that. As I said, I felt wonderful that I, I have a lot of patients that have been helped with this because whatever is good for me has to be good for my patients. So I started telling them, you know, I love patients because they are like trench soldiers. I went through all this exhaustive analysis, research and all that because ultimately I was going to recommend to my patients. I don't want to recommend them anything wrong, right? So I have to do all these things, but patients come to me with the full trust. You have to be role model. Yeah, exactly. Not only that I have to do it, but they trust me. What the interesting part about the patients is, they trust you 100%. Mm -hmm. That we, we believe in you. So whatever you tell us, we'll do it. Like this girl, and not many, just hurts. A lot of people will need that. So what I'm saying is like switching from the animal kingdom to the plant kingdom, there are a lot of benefits. Not only it has the zero cholesterol, but the cellulose, which is full of fiber. What does the fiber do for you? Fiber helps you move your bowels because fibers we cannot absorb, right? So it one, it will give you bulk, so your bulk movements will get better. Besides, the fiber is roughage. It slides against your inner lining of your intestines and it scrubs the old, old dying cells and allows the healthy cells to come in the front. So dying cells have a less capacity to fight against cancer. And the new healthy cells, they have very many oncogenes, which are powerful genes that can fight against the cancer. So by doing this, they also reduce the incidence of cancer. That's why animal foods have been linked with a lot of intestinal cancers and plant-based diet has been known to reverse or reduce the risk of cancers. So there are a lot of benefits and I would not go too far in details. I know we have to, we have other session coming up, but the milk, milk is something, does anybody know what is the connection between milk and diabetes? Milk is made out of lactose. What is lactose? Lactose is sugar, it's sugar, it's carbs. 40% of the milk's calories are coming from sugar. So that's the link between milk and diabetes, and of course milk is high in cholesterol. Sorry. What do you think of like non-fat, non-sweetened Greek yogurt? Lactose is still there, right? Non-fat removes, so the cholesterol part is taken care of. Well, what about with Greek yogurt? I mean, doctors tell me to eat that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are so many substitutes available on the plant-based diet, also fermented foods and all that. So that can be arranged, but at not at the cost of so many other things, like I said. Uh, the high cholesterol, that's one thing. One cup of milk gives you 24 milligrams of cholesterol. One cup of cheese, guess. How many, how many milligrams of cholesterol? 254. Ooh. 10 times. 10 cups of milk is one cup of cheese. And look at how much cheese we're, how many guys consuming. Mm. So, yes, definitely we should remove that. Fat free might be some help, but did you know that there are nine natural hormones in the milk? Why there are hormones? Apple doesn't have hormones. Plant-based foods, foods don't have hormones. Why? Why there are hormones? They're fed. No, no, no. Those are additional hormones. Forget about that. I'm talking about natural hormones which are built into the milk. Now whether you have fat-free milk or lactose-free milk or what, doesn't matter. These hormones are, cannot be removed. Why? Because cow. How, well, well, there are two, two sections, two, two answers to that. One, it is naturally present because cow is a mother. It feeds the milk to the baby. We are not the cow's baby. We are the only species in the world who will cross the species and drink someone else's mother's milk for the rest of our life. Imagine that. It's crazy, right? So those nine hormones, one of the hormones is called IGF-1. Insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1. Very powerful hormone. Its job is to stimulate the sex centers. So if there is a, a female calf, it has to become a, a, a cow, and a male calf has to become a bull. 
So IGF-1 will grow and stimulate the sex center. So that's how they mature to become whatever they're destined to be. But we are already fully grown. Our sex centers are already stimulated. What do you think these hormones are going to do? Overstimulate them. That's why milk has been linked with breast cancer, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, prostate cancers. All those things have been linked with milk. Right? So those are the things on top of that, like Anthony is saying, they inject the hormones to stimulate more production of more milk. The, the one with the hormones gives three times the milk. They, that's all they care. But all these hormones come to our body. Diethyl stilbestrol was routinely being injected to the cows. But it's an estrogen, a type of estrogen. It stimulates the, the mammary glands and produces more milk. They found out that it causes breast cancer. So what did they do? Took it off the market. But America is smart. So they tweaked the molecule. They say, okay, instead of diethyl, we will give tetraethyl or quadroethyl, whatever. Now you go and do the studies. The studies take 20 years to find the correlation. Before that, they already make the profits at our cost. So these are the another things you have to realize that milk has been heavily linked with cancers. And like Anthony said, the worst atrocity anyone can commit on female. To me, cows or females are females, right? Normally, a cow is pregnant, delivers the baby, and the baby is feeding for a year, year and a half, and then the milk production starts going down, she gets pregnant again. Wrong. Not in the factories. What they do is, while they are Milking the cow, of course, the calf never gets the milk, of course, They're being sold because they inject the cows. They artificially inseminate the cows while they are lactating. So their pregnancies start while they are lactating. And plus they give a very heavy winter feed. And all this combination of heavy feeding and injecting the hormones on top of that, so that cow is pregnant and lactating at the same time. Now, not many people know, but the pregnancy is a high estrogen condition. The day you start getting pregnant, like they get conceived, your estrogen level shoots like crazy. So all that estrogen goes in the milk that they are coming, uh, collecting from the cows. That is the reason some of the European countries forbid that practice. But America is America. Dollar talks. So this is very like atrocious things they've been doing. Imagine being pregnant and milking at the same time. So some of these things we really have to take it into account. And uh, there are so many other, of course, uh, facets of the whole food plant-based diet, the environment, and uh, the cruelty and all those things, but there is not enough time for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shah, for that insightful, um, you know, talk. And if you guys have any questions, he is around. You can ask. Any? any do you want to ask any questions right now? Yeah, I don't mind. Go, yes, Dr. Shah. Uh, sure. I was just wondering, is there a particular type of plant-based milk that's been like the healthiest? Or? I, I didn't get that. I'm sorry. Uh, is there a particular plant-based milk? All plant-based milks are healthy, but if you want to compare with the milk itself, milk has 8 grams of protein, soy milk <coughs> has a high amount of protein. There is also a, a pea protein that's being used, it's called repo, that also is pretty equivalent to, so that way, like other, like almond milk, supposing may not have as much protein. If you want to really, want to concentrate on protein intake, those, those milks are better. But yes. they are processed. Yeah. All those milk, plant-based milks are Not necessarily. You can make them at home. Yeah, that yeah, is very easy. So buying is buying. <coughs> buying is buying, right? America. Yeah, exactly. yeah but buying, you know, it involves, they have to increase the shelf life. It has to go in the shop. So exactly. those kind of things. But yeah. still better than milk. Right. Okay. Still better than still milk. Still better than, oh yeah, definitely. Yes. Vegetarians also get cholesterol. Of course. Because if they consume dairy, they will. No, vegans, vegan, those who are vegan will get cholesterol. They, well, it, well so most of the cholesterol comes in the diet. Once you go vegan, you can see tremendous drop. If it still continues, that could be a familial thing. Then, of course, it's an individual case that has to be dealt with physicians. But because a lot of times people have a familial hyperlipidemia. So that is, of course, possible, yes. But at least we should do whatever we can do to prevent. Do you have any 
you like that? Yeah. Yes. Um, why do you think that a lot of doctors fail to see the, you know, the difference between like, um, you know, like for example, on the cancer um, webpage, they promote these items to, you know, to people who have cancer, like this is what you should eat, like why do you think doctors do they are, they are turning around. I, I, I had talked talk to my favorite uh, hematologist oncologist, Dr. Shagorin. I used to use him a lot. He said, Shanik, you're right. I was going to give a grand round at Mountain Side Hospital, but it just didn't work out, and I retired. So then, then everything went over. But she, he was telling me that, Shanik, that would be the best thing. And he has been, a lot of cancer specialists have been recommending people to switch right. to plant based diet. In no fact, question. oncology is one of the most fo plant forward. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Oncologists, especially breast cancer, cancer specialists, now they recommend. Now, awareness is coming up little by little. Yeah. But then again, like I said, there is a lack of uh, nutritional background for a lot of doctors. That's why I prefer to talk to doctors, right? Like one doctor, you can change the life of a thousand others, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I, I always interact with people directly. So I enjoy any kind of talk. Uh, I gave a talk in Atlantic City uh, last year in Harris, and there were 450 doctors because the physicians, uh, you know, there was a standing room only because they really looking for that information. Nobody has gone into the detail that I did. I just, I just couldn't do without it, so I had to do it. So it just was my interest, my, my passion, and then I shared with them and they loved it. So, a um, couple of years ago, I was under the impression that nothing really can go wrong with a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. um, so I was consuming a lot of cruciferous vegetables, soy milk, tofu yes. and stuff like that. It actually made my Hashimoto's worse. Mm. So I just want to know what are the limitations within the plant-based diet as well that we should keep in mind to take care of underlying conditions like that. Hashimoto's is basically iron deficiency, so you right. have Hashimoto's is anti... Is Th it Thyroid. thyroid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thyroid is iodine. So yeah, all the iodine that you eat, it basically gets concentrated in the thyroid gland. Yeah. And then from the iodine, there are 11 steps before it makes the thyroid hormone. There are such a complicated steps. If you read the whole biologic, uh, biochemistry cycle, you would be surprised why everybody does not have a thyroid issue. So iodine is the main source from which the thyroid hormone is going to be made. But those steps are very complicated steps. Uh, switching this, if, if you have to maintain the iodine one, that's for sure. But on top of that, you might actually have uh, an inborn, I mean, ingrained defect in producing the thyroid hormone. Nothing can be bypassed with food or without food, doesn't may not matter. Because no matter you could eat tons of iodine, it still may not convert. So it all depends. Another thing I have noticed that I had a contact with a, a lady physician from India, which I had never thought about it. She told me that all her thyroid patients, she tells them to go on organic food. Mm -hmm. Because non-organic food with all these chemicals and pesticides and all those things, there are no studies that have been ever done and ever will be done, but indirectly they are affecting the production of thyroid hormone. And in fact, in my practice itself, I tried doing that indirectly. There is one system called NDS system. It's all about raw food. No packaged foods, nothing like that. And yes, 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 yeah. So the husband and wife went there, both of their the thyroid disappeared. So it's very complicated thing. So if you have an existing disease, uh, I think I would make sure that you take enough iodine. And if you still have the Hashimoto's, doesn't cure, then you have to be treated. No, no, that, that's fine. It's under control right now. But I was saying that if I introduce cruciferous vegetables in my diet and tofu and stuff like that, that creates a problem. So cruciferous vegetables are not, uh, they don't agree yeah. with me, I guess. But I yeah. think it's a very also good part. Also, if you're so, fashion, yeah, yeah. soy is something that you should exactly. yeah, so yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But like kale, I thought, yeah. oh, it was healthy and I was putting it through the top it's, time. But you know, it's like they say, one man's healthy is. And it it may not work because you have a very specific right. condition. Yeah. So I was wondering like, if there are some, um, you know, so in certain food categories like that, that I should I'm keep sure. in mind, not just for me, but even for others, right? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that even when I'm at it. Yeah, that's micromanagement, but if you buy the concept itself, then a lot of things can be done. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because like, you know, it's just, that's the way it is. Because the good iodine source on the animal side is all 
seafood, right? Yeah, that's what pescatarian. <laughs> right, but uh, you know that comes with cholesterol too. So it's and a lot of these things. Uh, pharmaceutical companies are coming in the way too. They don't want certain uh, studies to be. Of course, a lot of research. A lot of studies are supported, are supported by them yeah. because they are the one who have money. Exactly. I myself was taking. I had thyroid uh, hypothyroidism for ten years, and I started doing this. Uh, uh, spiritual practice and in that I'm doing a lot of pranayam and that the certain pranayam I'm off the medication for last three years I don't take any more thyroid medicine any more questions we can proceed yes does that soy milk have hormones too soy by definition has hormones it has hormones soy by definition is modulator of the estrogen receptors but it hasn't been found or earlier they had a concern that it could lead to breast cancer and those kind of thing but the receptor that it stimulates is actually anti so if at all there is a reduction in the uh, breast cancer risk so but no direct causal any bad side effects for sure so now soy is been very well accepted but uh, soy has something called phytoestrogens so plant estrogens and right. phytoestrogens are actually amazing they have amazing benefits uh, you know especially like women uh, menopausal women and they can benefit from it like you know there's it, the research shows there is a reduction in heart flushes uh, it is actually protective against uh, you know metastatic breast cancers i just look at it like that if soy was bad the chinese people would have been the first yes. to suffer so they are using soy as long as we have been using sure. the world has been using dairy yeah, yes. and look what so, they did to them the china study they did a china study in the villages the breast cancer risk was 1 out of 38 women in shanghai and beijing 1 out of 8 1 out of 10 or something yeah so there was a long by eating the western food with with oh. women starting from age 14 uh, you know about 20000 women and this was done in china what they uh, what what the study showed that the earlier they started taking soy the higher reduction in the uh, incidence of breast cancer so it is protective and earlier you start the better protection you get and one thing is like non gmo you know non gmo organic soy is a much better option okay thank you any more questions